first and always giving honor to God, our creator, for it is in God that we live and move and have our very being. Giving honor to his son, my Lord and Savior, for there is only one name given under heaven and earth by which we can be saved, and that is the name of Jesus Christ. Giving honor to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, Guide, Teacher, an ever-present help in time of trouble. As always, I give honor to my wife, Denise, flesh of my flesh, bone of my bone, the butter on my biscuit, the honey in my tea, and the pepperoni on my pizza. Hello, my friends. Hello, family. My brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to Wesley Chapel United Methodist Church. I am Pastor William Burt Neal, and we are so glad that you're here with us today. This is our virtual worship experience, and we pray that you will enjoy the music, the prayers, the videos, and the messages in our worship experience. We also hope and pray that you would subscribe to our channel, and perhaps you will invite others to worship with you and with us every Sunday. If this is your first time, then welcome. You bless us with your presence, and we hope you'll just come back again and again. We are forever grateful that God has provided this, this virtual way for us to worship with you and hear a word from God and praise his holy name. This is also our way to stay connected and informed about the ministry activities of the church, the ministry activities that we do in the community. So I pray that you will use the church announcements to, to guide your participation in ministry, your personal discipleship, and your gratitude through your gifts of tithes and offering. My friends, because of the coronavirus pandemic and its variants, we are still worshiping with a modified worship schedule. Next Sunday, we will worship with a drive-in worship experience, taking communion together in the parking lot of the church. So if you can, please join us at 10.30 a.m. on the first Sunday in October here at Wesley Chapel. There will only be one teleconference virtual worship service at 8 o'clock, and you will be able to watch the YouTube service on Sunday as well as any time during the week. Please know that whenever you have the opportunity to worship with us, whether it be virtually or a drive-in service, you are, you are more than welcomed, and we will be grateful for you to be with us. We believe that Wesley Chapel is a warm and welcoming fellowship of believers, and we're doing our very best to keep each other safe as we follow the COVID-19 protocols and look forward to one day being together again in person. Follow us on Facebook, Wesley Chapel, McDonough. It is my esteemed honor and pleasure to introduce to some of you and simply present to others of you, Reverend Derek Keith Walton. He is a member of our ministerial team and is bringing the message today. Reverend Walton is a gifted man of God who loves the Lord with all his heart, mind, and soul and expresses it in his preaching and his prayers. His messages have always been meticulously prepared and thought-provoking and relevant to our current times. Derek moved to the city of McDonough in 2019, and in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic, he has still been very active, getting acclimated to the city, Henry County, and the Wesley Chapel Church family. He brings a wealth of United Methodist experience to us from a laity perspective as he has served in several ministries to include the Board of Trustees, staff parish relations, nominations and leadership development, outreach and worship. He has also taught Sunday school and been a lay speaker and a lay leader. He also brings a wealth of ministerial experience to us as he is the former pastor of Mount Zion UMC in St. Indigo's, Maryland, where he served for seven years. Derek and his wife, Melissa, have been married for 13 years and have a blended family of six children and six grandsons, and they're expecting another grandchild real soon. We are truly blessed to have Reverend Walton as a member of our ministerial team. Now, before we hear a word from God through Reverend Walton, let's invite Reverend Vicki Wansley to come and, and pray for us. Reverend Wansley, won't you come now and lead us in prayer? Thank you, Pastor. 
Pastor Neil. Let us bow, please, for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we bow before you as humbly as we know how, God, and we give you thanks and praise for your holy, precious love for us, God. Father, if we had 10,000 tongues, they would not be enough to give you thanks and adoration for all that you have done for us, oh God. God, we come before you, each in our personal places today, but spiritually united, thanking you and giving you praise for the privilege of seeing another day. We are grateful for our health and our spiritual wealth, Lord. We thank you for protection from danger seen and unseen. We thank you, God, for protection, Lord, as we walk during our daily paths, God, and we ask you to teach us to develop minds like Jesus Christ. Help us to walk in unity, love, and compassion for each other. God, we thank you for never leaving us and never abandoning us, Lord God. Great and magnificent is your faithfulness, Lord. God, when we're hurt, Help us to forgive, God. When we're weak, build us up. When we're sick, heal us, God. When we're sad, fill us with your joy. When we're lonely, let your Holy Spirit comfort us, God. When we're hungry, feed us, Lord. And when we long for sweet communion with you, consume us, God. Father God, hear our secret prayers and grant us our greatest needs according to your will for our lives. Father, we know that we are impure, and so purge us from our sinful ways. And when we are in need of a fresh touch for our souls, God, touch us, Lord. Bind up our broken hearts and help us to perceive your unseen hand in the unfolding of our lives. Help us to be attentive to the gentle guidance of your spirit, Lord, that we may know your unfailing love is always present. Oh, God, continue to see the suffering in our world, Lord. Help us to offer ourselves as agents of mercy in action. We ask, Lord, that you will supply all of our needs according to the riches of your glory through Jesus Christ. We pray for our pastor and his family, for our ministerial team and their families, for our leaders and ministries, for our musicians, God, and for your servants everywhere. And now, Lord, we lift up Reverend Walton, God, and we pray for the message that you have placed in him, Lord. Let him preach it with boldness, God, so that we can understand what it is you would like for us to do. Father, we ask for your spirit to be felt during our time together and that you will urge someone to give their lives to you. God, we love you. We trust you, and we are relying on your continued movement in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning, church family. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Um, Reverend Wansley, thank you for that inspiring prayer. Um, Pastor Neil, thank you for that wonderful introduction. And, um, but first, giving all honor and glory to my Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, and certainly giving honor and gratitude to the shepherd of this house, the Reverend Dr. Neil. And my sincere thanks to the, to the pastors and ministers and church leaders and all those who serve and labor in God's holy kingdom. And last, but certainly not least, give an honor to my wifey who continues to walk beside me in my walk with ministry. I would like to lift up a verse from Paul's letter to the Roman believers in preparation for this, this morning's sermon. And I'll be reading from um, Romans, the 12th division, the second verse, one verse. And I'll be reading from the NIV version, and it reads, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve 
what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. My sermon title is simply God's good, pleasing, and perfect will. How many of you have professed that they have given their lives to Jesus Christ? Now, I can't see your response in this virtual world where we spend a, a good amount of time, but that is probably a good thing because your response is between you and God. If you have given your life to Christ, then you are redeemed and are being restored according to God's best plan and purpose for your life, God's will for you. See, this one verse is a sort of doctrine of faith that provides some basic principles for the redeemed and those being restored to put into practice. See, these principles provide guidance for our Christian behavior and attitude that lead us to the abundant and eternal life that God has promised. It is the will of God to be in relationship with him and to live according to his plan so that we may discover the truest version of ourselves. God even sent his son into the world to teach and preach life in his kingdom. Now, Paul's simple guidelines give a, a don't, a do, and a why as he urges believers to respond to the Lord's call on our lives. And our response to this call from God is evident in our lives in, in three ways. Through separation, transformation, and demonstration. First, there should be some evidence of separation from the world in the life of the believer. Followers of Christ are set apart from the world. We are holy and sanctified. We are called away from the pattern set by this world. Paul pleads, don't conform to the pattern of this world. He doesn't say, don't act like, don't pretend to be, or don't play like what the world dictates you to be. He says, don't conform. Don't let the world dictate your mindset or your character. Don't let the world define who or whose you are. In other words, do not fashion yourselves according to what the world shows and tells us. A pattern can be positive or negative. When we desire something positive by repeatedly performing some action, like when I take my meds the same time each day, the pattern's good. And a pattern is considered bad when used in a negative context, like in this verse read from Paul's letter. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. See, Paul refers to a singular pattern, the many negative things that exist in the world that form a single pattern, a pattern that leads us astray of God's true plan and purpose for our lives. God's word is truly prophetic. It is the true word of God. And here's an example. The Ephesian epistle speaks to the ruler of the power of the air, a spirit that is currently working in the disobedient and the sons and daughters of the disobedient, a spirit that works from generation to generation to generation. Now currently, radio, TV, and the ever-powerful internet moves to and fro on our airways, allowing the ruler of the power of the air to pull us away from God. The ruler of the power of the air, the ancient one, has been busy for quite a while. He was the most cunning beast in the garden, working to pull mankind away from God. The words of God's adversary traveled the air to the woman, and the woman and the man fell for his deception, and the rest is history. See, Jesus calls for his disciples to, his disciples to be sanctified set apart from the world. And before his crucifixion, Jesus prays for his disciples and is found in the 17th division of John. And he says, my prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but you protect them from the evil one. They are not of this world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. Jesus prays that disciples be sanctified to live in accordance with the truth 
the word of God, which he has brought to them. And Jesus cautions believers against living Christian isolation. See, we are called to be in the world, but not of the world. We're called to be involved in community and world issues and, and fill places of need. We're given a choice and have free will to decide the path we will take. If we decide God's desired path, we should ask ourselves a basic question. Am I truly serving the kingdom that Jesus preached? And when I think about this question, I sometimes think about my past life. For many years, the Lord, the Lord was calling me for kingdom work. And my answer was this. Lord, as soon as I finish having fun and being foolish, I'll get back to you. And when I found the Lord, I wept whenever I thought about my response to God. How dare I tell the Lord to wait? But because of God's grace and mercy, today I have the opportunity to serve God's kingdom. And I am thankful. Thank you, Jesus. See, we must make up our mind to separate ourselves from the world and the evil one but not from God. We are in the world to witness the power of God's grace and mercy by our worship of a man with holes in his hands and his feet. We do this only when we resist conforming to a way of life dictated by the world. And secondly, our response to the Lord's cause evident by a life transformation. To move away from conforming to the pattern of the world our lives must be transformed. This transformation takes place by the renewing of our minds. A life transformation is preceded by a renewal of the mind. And we must decide to change direction that leads us from a world mind to a Christian mind. The mind must be reset so that we can be changed to a new creature in Christ. By nature, people do not like change. Somebody help me with this one. What should help believers embrace change is realizing that we are disciples. And disciples are not just followers, but also learners. As we open our minds and hearts to God's word, we become doers of his word. And very often we'll find that demonstrating God's word calls for a life change. Everything we do calls for some level of effort. The people of God are given special resources for kingdom work. Paul's letter to the Corinthian church tells us that there are different gifts, but the same spirit. There are different ministries, but the same Lord. And there are different activities, but the same God produces each gift in each person. A manifestation of the spirit is given to each person for the common good. One and the same spirit is active and all the God-given gifts, distributing to each person as he wills. But the use of these gifts is preceded by a makeover of the mind. I often chuckle when I hear people say, all we have to do is, we know what to do, but what happens when it comes to doing? <laughs> Putting in the work of kingdom building starts in the mind. This comes as no surprise to me. In the evening, I have to get my mind right just to get out of the easy chair and go to bed. God distributes spiritual gifts and talents in the measure God sees fit. The realignment of our minds so that our will aligns with God's will allows us to naturally accept and apply these gifts. Along with the understanding that we work together with our various gifts and talents, we are empowered to carry out the business of tending to God's kingdom. Many of us think that once our life is transformed, then our mind will be renewed. But it's the other way around. If you want to come out of an uh, unpleasant circumstance, a, a limitation in your life, a stagnation in your ministry, your mind must be at work first, most times needing a track change. When your mind is renewed, your life will be transformed. And where your mind goes, your life goes. Stop making excuses for your life. Renewing of the mind will never work with excuses. Stop and start over by working with God. He alone has the transformative power 
required for a brain change. You have the power to decide that you want to make a change. The mind is a servant, either to the spirit or to the flesh. When the spirit is weak, the mind comes under the influence of the flesh. But when we consistently build our spirit by communing with the Holy Spirit, allowing the Holy Spirit to live within us, we have a choice to think on the things of God or let the mind go with the flow of the world. What you feed your mind becomes a mindset. When we hear about renewing the mind, we get busy trying to, to, to change our mindsets and quickly learn that this is not an easy task. The only way to change our mindset is by filling our conscious mind with God's truth, which is God's holy word. A mindset is what controls you. The mind is what you control. So work on the mind. Consistently and unceasingly renew the mind. Resist negative thoughts. And they won't leave on their own. Resist the evil thoughts of the enemy and shaky ideas of the world. Positive thoughts are not going to stay unless assisted. And we assist positive thoughts by making room in our hearts and minds for the word of God as we resist negative thoughts. Bad thoughts come, but they don't have to stay if we speak against them with the truth of God's word. And it's going to take time to see a change in your mind. Maybe the reason God took six days to create the world instead of one day is that he wanted to show us how to go through the process of change. At the end of each day, God looked over his work. God celebrated what was done instead of complaining about what still needs to be done. See, the renewing of the mind is aided by celebrating the victories God has given to us. The world will try to mess up that process of, of mind renewal by making us compare our progress with, with worldly symbols of its own making. But focus on God and remembering the great and amazing things God has done for us keeps us going. Focus on what God is doing now instead of what he is not doing. God's way may not be our way, and his will may not be our will. When we are complete in God, we do not need to compare ourselves to anything or anyone else. But be the best version of you the world has ever seen. Make the decision to change your mind. You can make a difference in, in our communities. Poverty, hunger, racism, senseless death, and, and apathy. And we can make a change in the world. Health, climate control, environmental issues. But it begins with the decision to transform minds, your own, and encourage others. Let God make the transformation. That's what God does. And God is not done with you yet. Lastly, the life of the believer is a demonstration of our response to God's call on our lives. The call on the life of the believer is to accept and practice God's will. God's will is his desire for our lives. And what God offers us is good, pleasing, and perfect. We are true believers when we accept and practice God's will, knowing that it is the best way for our lives. And the only way our will is going to be more aligned with God's will is through our relationship with God. See, we step closer to God by not conforming to the world and by transforming our minds so that we have a strong and permanent relationship with God. See, this can be difficult when we live in difficult times. A global pandemic, chaotic political climates, domestic and foreign, war zone-like conditions in neighborhoods, a deteriorating infrastructure, and the list goes on and on. And we still have our own personal issues to deal with. But we trust God to know what is good, pleasing, and perfect. This means that we will be tested and tempted from time to time, but our focus on God will get us through our own desert experience, just as it did 
with our Lord and Savior, Jesus. We align our wills with that of God by practicing unity with God and with one another. Paul writes to the Ephesian believers, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ, from him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Don't hold back on your part. When you do, the whole body suffers. And we align our wills with that of God by our willingness to forgive one another. See, unforgiveness not only places a wedge between you and the other party, but it also places a wedge between you and God. John's gospel tells us that when Jesus first met with the disciples after his resurrection, he gave them his peace. He gave them the gift of the Holy Spirit, and he passed on to them the duty of the church to proclaim forgiveness and to warn of the danger of forfeiting the mercy of God through unforgiveness. As we align our wills with that of God by our willingness to sacrifice See, Paul's letter to the Philippians, he writes, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Here the word conformed is used in the positive sense. By fashioning ourselves after the sacrificial death of Jesus, a death that was followed by resurrection, We live a resurrected life. The old person is gone, and the new person lives on to be a living sacrifice. Not working for the sake of working or for selfish ambition, but compassionate service that helps, fills a need, shows the way to repairing brokenness. Our sacrifice is seen in our service. Our true worship is a demonstration of our response to God's call. In summary, allow me to leave you with this. Living out the plan and purpose of God, God's will, is not automatic. Because of his immense love for us, God sent his son into the world, bearing life-giving gifts, the Holy Spirit, and his own precious life. We only need to make the decision to accept God and all that comes with the life and true relationship with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We may know what the good and acceptable and perfect will of God is, but we can't prove it apart from the transforming work of God. Our response to God's will working in our lives will be evident in our holy separation from the world, the divine transformation of our minds, and a true demonstration of our willing of our will aligning with that of God. Let us pray together. Almighty God, grant us the courage to make the decision to live according to your plan for our lives. Grant us the will to separate us from worldly things and the wiles of the devil. Allow us to seek ways to witness and demonstrate our belief in and love for you, O God. Bless us that we may fully discover your call on our lives. That our lives will rise to the level of your truth so that we may test and approve your good, pleasing, and perfect will. This we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Reverend Walton, thank you. Thank you, Derek, for that that word. God bless you. God's good, pleasing, and perfect will. By living in God's good, pleasing, and perfect will, we can live the truest version of ourselves. And, and, And Derek, thank you for the reminder that we are not to conform to the patterns of this world. 
that we are to be set apart for God. And, and, and we cannot tell the Lord to wait until we're ready. And you informed us that in order to move from the patterns of the world, we must be transformed. We must be transformed by the realignment of our minds. And Derek, I appreciate you admonishing us to stop making excuses uh, for making the changes that we need to make in our lives. We have the power within us to make the change. And thank you also for reminding us that the call of every believer is to accept and practice God's will. Thank you, Derek, for providing a right now word for our spiritual journey and refocusing us on God's good, pleasing, and perfect will. I want to extend an invitation to, to all of you today. We, we offer Christ to you, oh my brother. We offer Christ to you, oh my sister. He will give you brand new life, new life abundantly. So come to Christ. Come to Christ. If you have not made Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior for your life, we want to give you that opportunity to do that today. Or perhaps you've accepted Jesus Christ in your past and, and you've kind of gotten off the path, the path of righteousness. Maybe you want to renew your faith today. And what better way to do that than to come to Christ? As you know, God's good, pleasing, and perfect will. I, I want you to know that God loves you. God accepts you as you are. No matter what you have done, the Lord calls you to what you were created to be in him. So if you've never said yes to Jesus Christ and you've been trying to hold all the pieces of this life together on your own and it just keeps falling apart, today is the day to say yes to Jesus. And even if you think it's too late, I want you to know it's never too late for Christ. Would you bow your heads with me and let me, let me pray this prayer as if I were you. Most gracious and loving God, I, I need you. I am a sinner saved by your grace. And I need your forgiveness and your mercy. And so God, I'm asking that you would just simply, simply please come into my life today and deliver me from my sins. That you would cleanse me of my past, God, and help me to be transformed and new in you. Lord, I believe in your son. I, I, I know that he died for me and was resurrected and, and is alive today. And Lord, I ask that today you would come. Be my personal Lord and Savior. God, and forgive me for those times and when I have gotten off the path that leads to you. I, I want you to live in me. I want your perfect will to be done in my life. And so God, today I, I turn away from my sins and I ask that you would guide me and teach me that you would come and live in my heart so that I would know your perfect will to be done in my life. I turn away from my sins, God. And that's that you would free me right now for cheerful obedience to your word. I want my life to be a reflection of the love you have for me. And I want people to see me and see you. I need you, Lord. I trust you. I believe in you. I love you so much. Thank you for the gift of your saving grace that I can live eternally with you on high. And it is in the name of Jesus Christ that I pray this prayer. Amen. Amen. So now, my friends, we invite you to call our ministry connect line at 678-709-1254 and take advantage of a moment of personal prayer time with one of our ministers. We also invite you to use the ministry connect line if you'd like to join Wesley Chapel. Come and be a part of our church family. You are more than welcome to grow faithfully with us in Christ. Pick up the phone today. Call 678-709-1254. We want to pray with you and for you, and we want to connect you to Christ and his church. Please call today. 
Thank you again, Reverend Walton, for uh, that powerful word, that right now word. Uh, thank you, Reverend Wansley, for the gift of your prayers. And we give thanks for our music ministry and using their gifts in service to the Lord. I, I continue to give God thanks for our church staff and our production team that worked so hard to, to help us navigate the, this new world of worship as we come through this pandemic. And I want to thank you for being with us today. Thank you for the gift of your presence. We pray you've been blessed by the word today. Please receive this benediction for the end of this service and the beginning of a new week. And now to him who is able to keep you from falling, who is able to keep you from stumbling and present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only living and wise God be all glory and honor dominion and majesty through Jesus Christ our Lord, now and forevermore. Amen and amen. My friends, remember you are blessed to be a blessing. Bless somebody today. Please be safe. Take care of each other. We look forward to seeing you again next Sunday. This is Pastor Neil, and I'm boasting only in the Lord. Thank you for worshiping with us today. Congratulations to the United Methodist Men's 2020 Man of the Year Award recipient, Brother Tim McCray. The award was presented at last Sunday's drive-in service, so if you didn't have an opportunity to see it, log on to Facebook or YouTube anytime to view the service. And again, congratulations, Brother Tim McCray. Though the way we worship and serve has changed, ministry and the business of the church has not stopped, and your tithes and offerings are always needed to support the work God has for us. You are reminded that there are five safe, contactless ways to give at Wesley Chapel. Drive by and use the drop box outside under the canopy by the church office entrance. Go to our website at wesleymcd.org and click on the giving link. Use traditional U.S. mail addressed to P.O. Box 1146, McDonough, Georgia, 30253-1146. Text to give on your cell phone at 770-954-8169. Or use the Give Plus mobile app, which is a free download on the Apple App Store or Google Play. If you're currently using the Give Plus mobile app, we want to make you aware that after Thursday, September 30th, Give Plus will be replaced with the Vanco mobile app, also a free download. It's easy to use, and when you switch to Vanco, your Give Plus login credentials stay the same. There's no need for a new user ID and password. If you have recurring gifts set up, they will continue to be made as scheduled. But from now until this coming Thursday, you can continue to use Give Plus. But go ahead and download the Vanco app today so you'll be ready by the end of this month. Attention parents and youth, it's time to sign up for Virtual Confirmation 2022. Confirmation classes are designed for youth ages 12 and up. If your child has not been confirmed in the Methodist Church, now is the time. Just go to our website, wesleymcd.org, and fill out the online registration form. Virtual classes will be held via Google Meet each scheduled Sunday from 1 o'clock to 2.15 p.m. beginning November 7, 2021 through May 22, 2022. Mark your calendars for the Parents, Confirmands, and Mentors Virtual Orientation on October 23rd at 2 p.m. For additional information, contact Rev. Vicki Wansley, Confirmation Coordinator at the Church Office Number 770 770- 9574728 Zoom with Virtual Sunday School for grades K through 6 on Sundays at 11:30 a.m. Facilitated by Mrs. Jennifer Morris, your child is invited to an interactive class experience they're sure to enjoy. Check the Wesley website, Facebook, or Wesley email communication for the Zoom link. The Wesley Chapel Care and Visitation Ministry is spearheading a church-wide initiative to bless children in need around the world by participating in a program called Operation Christmas Child. This program provides shoeboxes filled with gifts of toys, school supplies, and hygiene items. The children not only receive these gifts, but they also receive the greatest gift, 
which is a Bible and an introduction to Christ, to begin their Christian journey. Stay tuned for future announcements with details about how to pack the shoeboxes and when to pick up and drop them off in mid-October. Due to the coronavirus pandemic and its variants, we have modified our worship schedule. We will gather on first and third Sundays for outdoor drive-in worship services at 10.30 a.m., taking communion together on the first Sundays. On drive-in Sundays, there is only one teleconference at 8 a.m. However, on the second, fourth, and fifth Sundays, we will continue our currently scheduled teleconferences at 8 and 9.45. Join us here online each and every Sunday. And if you miss this service at 1030, just know you can go back and watch it on YouTube, Facebook, or the Wesley Chapel website any day, anytime, at your leisure. God bless you and keep you, and have a wonderfully blessed week.